Good morning. Spring Sunday. Woo! <laughs> it sure beats the snow we had a week ago. Let's stand together and lift the bright voices. Rejoice the Lord is King, your God and King adore. Mortals give thanks and sing and triumph evermore. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say. together to worship God in the name of Jesus Christ on the second Sunday of Easter. Let us bring our hearts together as we say our call to worship. In life, in death, in life beyond death, in success and discouragement, in fear and in hope, of the poor and of the broken, of the sinner and the sinned against. The risen Christ is Lord. The, okay. In church and community, in our hearts and in our homes. The risen, the risen Christ, Christ is Lord. Lord. And so, so we, we gather to worship in his, in his name. His kingdom shall not fail, he rules o'er heaven and earth. The keys of death and hell are to our Jesus' care. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say rejoice. Lift up your voice, rejoice again. I say Forever God is faithful. 
Join our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, we rejoice in this new day you have made. We praise you for the abundant life with which you bless us, and for all the beauty that surrounds us as spring takes hold again. We praise you for your Son, Jesus, and the power of new life promised in his resurrection. We praise you for your spirit of work in human history to restore and redeem our hope with that power of new life. God of steadfast love, we worship you with the Spirit and the Son and claim your new gift of life, even in the face of any doubt or danger within the world you love. All praise, honor, and glory be yours, O oh God. God of might and mercy. In raising Jesus from the dead, you showed us your power to defeat all that brings fear and sorrow to our lives. In his resurrection, Jesus promised to be with us everywhere and always. Yet we confess we are sometimes uncertain about your promises. We doubt the promise of resurrection for our own lives. Upheaval and anxiety eat away at our peace. Forgive us when we struggle to trust your goodness and your steadfast love for us. God of empty tombs and empty people, 
when we hesitate to speak of your hope, forgive us and give us voice. When we find it difficult to love another, forgive us and give us new compassion. When we want to stand with the high and mighty, forgive us and put us next to those who are poor and oppressed. When we stay locked behind our fears and doubts, forgive us and send us out to share your grace. We pray in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and set free from sin and sorrow. Christ comes into every shadowed corner of our lives in the light of Easter. Christ comes and gifts us with grace and hope. Christ comes to fill us with peace, that we may proclaim the good news of mercy and forgiveness. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Scripture reading this morning is taken from John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31, and then Psalm 100, which is responsive. Jesus appears to the disciples. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Jesus and Thomas. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the marks of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Psalm 100, which is responsive. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us. We are, his, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to God and praise God's name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. God's faithfulness continues through all generations. This is the word of the Lord.
So, thank you so much. That was amazing. I led services back in November. <laughs> and I shared a story with you about a man I went to university with. I went to the University of Guelph. And I met a man named Hans uh, who attended university. He was part of the agricultural college, and we called those Aggies. <laughs> um, and Hans was a funny guy. Really, he was always pulling pranks on somebody and telling jokes. I mean, he was a man of strong, strong faith. That's what really touched me about him, was his strong faith in God. And he had a lot of health problems, but he carried on. And I shared with you once that his wife said that all the time he, was, he would say, God is good, and she would have to say all the time. And he'd say all the time, and she'd say, God is good. And we'd said that together back in November, and I'd like us to say that again. God is good. And all the time, amen. Now Hans, he died back in March at the age of 46. And I watched the celebration of life for him online. And his brother shared with us that he was the youngest of five, and he was born in the Netherlands. I would love him because he was Dutch, right? He was born in the Netherlands, and he, his parents, when each of them were born, would celebrate the birth of their child's birth, the birth of their child, by giving them a passage of scripture to live by. Isn't that an amazing way to celebrate the birth of your child? That is just so cool. <clears throat> the scripture that Hans was given was Psalm 100. So the pastor at the celebration of life took us through Psalm 100. And he pointed out that when he was in seminary, he learned that these things are called imperatives or commands. Shout to the Lord. Worship. Come, know, enter, give thanks, praise. I frequently use this as a call to worship. It's one of my favorite psalms. And it was just so cool to go through this psalm and, and learn more about it and, and pray over it. So these seven commands, they're called commands. In Psalm 100, form the backbone of one of the most instructive psalms on giving praise to God. And the thing about these commands, it's not something that you can make somebody do. It has to come from within the worshiper, from within us, from a place of heartfelt joy, deep inside one's heart. This psalm communicates to us that when we worship God, our focus is on God not about us. When we come to worship, it's not about coming to get something out of it. It's just giving all praise and glory unto God. So the first one, shout for joy all the earth. Shout to the joy to the Lord for all the, all the earth. And this is a call to the nations, to all of us. Now the NRSV, New Revised Standard Version, uses the phrase, make a joyful noise, instead of shout. And the Hebrew word translated, shout for joy, is ruah. It is spelt R-U-W-A, pronounced ruah. It means to raise a battle cry, to sound a trumpet blast, or to shout in triumph. We are not offering just moderate shout of joy here. This is um, an unconstrained, uncontained shout for joy ex as an exclamation. Because there is joy, there is a shout. The second one, worship the Lord with gladness. I noticed in the 
New International Version and the New Revised Standard Version uses the word worship. But the King James Version uses the word serve. So serve the Lord with gladness instead of worship the Lord with gladness. There's a word pronounced abad in Hebrew. It is spelled A-B-A-D, abad, <laughs> pronounced abad. It's used in two ways, in a general sense, but also theologically. The general meaning is to work, to process, to perform, to labor, to serve, as in a servant or a slave. But in a theological or spiritual use, it has the special meaning to serve the Lord, to worship, to honor. It is a strong invitation to worship. And it's not that God needs us or anything that we have or can do, but it is God's will that we should serve the Lord, should devote ourselves to God's service. Let God be served, worshipped with gladness. By holy joy, we really do serve God. It is an honor to God and for us to rejoice in God. We ought to serve God with holy joy. Gospel worshipers should be joyful worshipers. If we serve God with honor, let us serve God with gladness. Third one, come before God with joyful songs. We are invited into the very presence of God. The word translated before him in Hebrew is penah or pene, P-A-N-E-H. -E it means before and face. In other words, we are coming face to face with God. And what could be more appropriate when coming face to face with God than to sing joyful songs as we have been so far today? One of the ways we serve God is by coming together to worship God in song. The implication of the joyful songs is that we sing with confidence, not necessarily our music ability, but confidence in our heart, in our worshipful, joyful heart, without hesitation. Know that the Lord is God. <laughs> Great minds think alike. Know that the Lord is God. It is God who made us. We are his. We are God's people and the sheep of his pasture. So we know in our heads who God is, right? But it's knowing in our hearts that we are created by God and loved by God. It implies more than merely a mental acknowledgement. This command requires a whole life affirmation that stems from complete devotion to God and worship of God. It is a very intimate, personal relationship. It implies experiencing the other, experiencing God, because we belong to God. To know by experience that the Lord God is our creator and shepherd. The fifth one, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. When we come to God, we have so many reasons to thank him. Jesus is the greatest of all these gifts, for all, of all these reasons. Bringing thankfulness and praise to God is a way to worship God. By giving praise to God, it's the best way to knit our hearts closer to him. Regardless of our situation, give thanks to God. God wants us to be faithful and praise his name whether things are going well or not. I tell you, that connects us. Praise God regardless. Each day, it's an opportunity to serve and worship God with our body, our heart, our strength, commitment, voice, 
finances, and all that God has blessed us with. Jesus himself continuously gave thanks to God. We must at all times praise the name of God. This is through prayer, singing, dancing, and our commitment to God's service. And the sixth and seventh commands, give thanks to God, praise God's name, And then in verse 5, we read, For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. God's faithfulness continues through all generations. And that is why we joyfully come before God's presence and worship God. And there it is. God is good. And all the time, God is deserving of human praise just because of who God is. Adam and Eve, they disconnected us from God through sin. And God then gave humanity ways to atone for sin and be able to reconnect with God. People would not seek to, rec would not seek to reconnect with God after making sacrifices. So God promised the Savior to be the sacrificial atonement for our sins. And Jesus is our risen Savior who connected us, who does connect us with God. Here's Thomas. Here's Jesus. Appearing to his disciples. After he rose from the tomb, we read today that Jesus appeared to his disciples and showed them his hands and his side. and to just show them that it really was him. Thomas wasn't there at the time, but when he heard about this, he wanted to see for himself. Without Thomas asking him, Jesus reappears to the disciples. Thomas is there this time. And Jesus shows Thomas his hands and feet. And Thomas falls at his feet and says, My Lord, it is you. Now, there are some theologians who claim that Jesus was admonishing Thomas for having to see in order to believe. Other theologians argue that Jesus was not admonishing Thomas, but telling him how great it is that he can actually see him in the flesh and see the wounds in his hands and side and be able to believe that it's really him, that he indeed has risen. Blessed are those who will never be able to see him in the flesh, but still believe that he rose from the dead. <clears throat> My friend Hans is a man of great faith, and he believed without seeing. And I've been thinking about this in many ways. And you know, I think about the ways and places in which I do see Jesus. Every day, I'm looking out, and I'm seeing the face of Jesus. Now, there are a couple of examples of, here are a couple of examples of ideas of what Jesus, our historical Jesus, may have looked like. Jesus was not the white, blue-eyed, brown hair, long, wavy hair man that we've sort of grown up, grown up thinking that he looks like, but he was brown. Where, where he came from, he would have had dark hair and brown skin. But regardless of what he would have looked like, there are so many ways in which I see Jesus. Every day, I just look around, look around now, look at each other and see Jesus. I see Jesus in the beauty of nature. I hear God in the birds. I feel God in the wind. When there are certain people who have given me a hug, I have felt the arms of God around me. How many times have we heard Nancy Robinson, when she's come up here 
to do the announcements. And she will say, this is where I saw God this week. Where do you see Jesus? So we go forth from worship to live for, serve God in the name of Jesus Christ. We are to be the hands and feet and voices of Jesus Christ in the world. Not only look to see where we see Jesus, we are to be Jesus in the world. We come to our worship. We give offer praise unto God with our whole hearts, not expecting anything from God, but just giving God all the glory. And we come from that. And we go out and we serve the Lord with gladness. God is good. And all the time, amen. <clears throat> Why don't we stand together? It felt like the appropriate response to that uh, message was the latter part of that song we just sang. So let's stand together and we'll just. Oh, 
Let's bring our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. Welcome, light, love, and hope of God. Surround us with the warmth of your Holy Spirit. Demonstrate your never-ending grace to us. Inspire us with this same grace to offer others. Enhance our senses to recognize your presence in the world so that we may see, hear, and touch the ways you engage in our everyday lives. Awaken our souls to the injustices that are prevalent within our cultures and churches. Grant us eyes to see those who are overlooked. Grant us ears to hear cries for help. Grant us hands to extend to those in need. May we advocate for those who are voiceless, who are parentless, who are homeless, and those who are disadvantaged. Fill us with empathy so that we may offer dignity to those we help. Grant us the wisdom to empower them. May we act out of your justice. May we love mercy. And may we walk humbly with you, O oh God. As we remember this day, our dear friends who suffer from illness and loss, Lord, help us to be a presence of comfort for them, for those who are lost and alone, alienated from family and friends. We ask that you empower us to reach out in compassion, offering appropriate help that will lift them into new life with you. For all who are in situations of danger, war, and strife, we pray that your peace will be with them and that the warfare and dangers will be vanquished by your good news. We pray for all those working to bring healing and life in places where there is little of either. For our community, our nation, Lord, we ask that you give to the leaders compassion, and wisdom, remembering that their lives rest in your care. And for ourselves, we ask for the extra measure of faith so that as doubts arise, we may meet them with confidence and emerge as strong witnesses to your love. We thank you, O oh God, for your power and presence in our lives. Renew us in the power of your Holy Spirit that we may have life in your name and go wherever you lead us. We pray in the name of our brother, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. As Tina reminded us this morning, we come to church to worship, to worship God. And this morning, where did I see God? I saw it in Tina, just shining through her. Thank you, Tina, for sharing and leading us. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was... <laughs> One announcement, a changed um, new member and refresher course is on Tuesday this week at 5. So if you're in that class, remember to come Tuesday, not Wednesday. We are still masking and self-distancing. We want to stay safe. 
sunflower seeds. We have some sunflower seeds still. And I was thinking, you know, there's probably someone that you've been meaning to keep in touch with and you've let it go by. Why not send them a card and put a package of sunflower seeds in with the card? It will take two stamps, however. <laughs> however, you will be helping Ukraine in the meantime. And announcement here, uh, Vacation Bible School looks like it's going to happen this year, July 18th to 22nd. The theme will be Fruit of the Spirit. So children, grandchildren, neighbors, let them know about that. And Lori has an announcement for us. Thank you, Nancy. Um, I might just add to that announcement that uh, Nancy just said about Vacation Bible School. I will be looking for volunteers, so please speak to me. <laughs> I'm coming after you. <laughs> That's right. I have a very important announcement today. It is the custom of our church to elect new ruling elders to session every two years when one third of our elders retire from the session. Session members are elected and then are ordained for life. Each member serves a six-year term. Elders meet each month with the minister in order to carry out the administration of the church. Session is responsible for the supervision and oversight of the congregation and is responsible for all policy and procedures within the church. Each session member is assigned a district of members and adherents to provide pastoral support and to keep in touch with regularly. Each member serves on one committee to represent session. These committees might include mission and outreach, pastoral care, personnel, audiovisual, worship, presbytery, or leading with care. If you would like to become an elder, or would like to nominate someone, please speak to either Reverend Ed or myself. Nomination forms can be picked up at the office. I'm not sure if they're there yet, but they will be there tomorrow. If you plan to nominate someone, it is best to speak to them beforehand. Since becoming a member of Session, I have learned a great deal and have made many new friends. It is a rewarding act of stewardship that helps others and allows me to share my gifts. Thank you, Lori. We are going to close our time with our new, uh, started last year, I guess, singing Going On Peace one time a month. So why don't we stand together? And this is a good one, as you know, to turn during it and sing it to each other because it is that kind of an encouraging word.
hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.